The vehicle I'm using is a 2004 Ford Ranger. For this example, I have confirmed good in-car power and an intact electrical system, but I do not have the ignition key. I'm going to use a basic repowering rig to supply power directly to the airbag control module. The cigarette lighter plug will get plugged into an accessory outlet in the vehicle. The positive wire is red, has an inline 7.5 amp fuse, and has a spade connector at the end. The spade connector gets connected to one side of the fuse block adapter. The negative wire is black and has an alligator clip at the end. This gets connected to a good vehicle ground. On the vehicle, the first thing I need to do is to identify the airbag control module fuse location. Do not count on the owner's manual being present in the vehicle. So ideally this research should be done before going into the field. Whether it's the actual owner's manual or a PDF version, I'm going to have to look in the index for the section on fuses. Here you can see the fuses are covered on pages 134 to 135. The power distribution center usually always follows the section on fuses, so it's not necessary to look it up separately. Pages 138 to 144 show the location of the power distribution center and list the fuses. None of the power distribution center fuses are applicable in this case. However, if you are using in-car power or adding a booster pack to the battery, it is always a good idea to take a look at its condition prior to attempting to image the ACM. Page 135 shows the location of the passenger compartment fuse panel under the right side of the instrument panel behind the kick panel. It also shows the color chart for the vehicle fuses. Page 136 shows the layout of the fuse block and part of the list of fuses. The list of fuses is continued on page 137. There are two fuses I need to identify. The first is that of the airbag control module, which in this case is fuse number 8, a 10 amp fuse. The color chart indicates a 10 amp mini fuse is red. The second fuse of interest is the data link connector, or DLC, which in this case is fuse number 29, a 20 amp fuse. The color chart indicates a 20 amp mini fuse is yellow. You will notice this fuse also protects a cigarette lighter or power point. It is not uncommon to find this fuse blown. If that were the case, you would not have power at the DLC port. Here you can see the passenger compartment fuse panel cover. Once the fuse panel cover is removed, I can see that on the inside there is no legend, so I'm going to have to use the owner's manual to assist me in identifying the location for the airbag control module fuse. Fuse number 8 is the fuse I want to remove. It is the fourth fuse down on the left row of fuses. As you can see, it is a red 10 amp fuse. Once I have removed the fuse, I need to insert the appropriate size fuse block adapter. You will notice there are two locations on the fuse block adapter I can connect the repowering rig to. One side will send power directly to the airbag control module. This is the load side of the fuse and is where I want to connect. The other side will send power into other areas of the vehicle's electrical system. This will not cause any damage to the vehicle. You might not even be aware you are on the wrong side, but noticeable indications can range from dash lights illuminating to the radio playing music. I need to have the ground wire of the repowering rig connected to a good vehicle ground. In this case, I'm going to connect the alligator clip to a metal bolt protruding through the firewall. At this point, I do not have the repowering rig plugged into a source of power. The next step is to connect the CDR interface to the vehicle using the data link connector. Assuming you have good in-car power, this should illuminate the green LED on the interface module as I have in this case. If after connecting the CDR interface to the DLC, the light does not illuminate, you should check the DLC fuse to see if it is blown. I generally always test the interface connection before attempting to image the ACM. 
This will ensure I have the correct COM port selected and have established communication between the CDR software and interface module. In this case, I am using the in-car power as a source of power for the CDR interface. For that reason, I am going to plug the repowering rig into an accessory receptacle in the vehicle. I always need to make sure I use the same source of power for both the CDR interface module and the ACM. Remember, normally the last step would be to apply power or turn on the ignition key, whatever the case may be. So in this case, I have the software ready to go with case comments and I am ready to collect data. I'm going to plug the repowering rig into the accessory receptacle and then click the collect ACM data icon. You can hear from the door chime that I am obviously on the wrong side of the fuse block adapter. I'm going to remove power and reverse the fuse block adapter so that I'm supplying power to the top portion instead of to the bottom. If I had not gotten any type of indication on the vehicle, I would have attempted to collect data and gotten a communication error message. I would have then switched the fuse block adapter and attempted to collect data again. I'm going to click the Collect ACM Data icon. In this case, I have to answer the Ford privacy question. The software will go through the standard three passes, and then I can save the collected data. Ultimately, using the repowering rig, I will have successfully collected data using in-car power, but without having the ignition key available. Now let's assume the vehicle has a dead battery. Perhaps it has an electrical system that is not intact or is potentially dangerous and you do not want to risk attaching a booster back to the vehicle. At this point, I have already identified the ACM fuse and appropriately connected the repowering rig. I have also connected the CDR interface module to the DLC with the DLC cable. However, in this case, you can see that the green light on the CDR interface module is not illuminated. In this case, it is because we have no in-car power, but this could also be the case if I had disconnected the vehicle's battery for safety reasons. This means I am going to need to supply a source of power for our repowering rig and our CDR interface module. Remember, I always need to make sure that I use the same source of power for both the CDR interface module and the ACM. In this case, I'm going to use a Y adapter or multiple receptacle adapter. I'm using one source of power, either a booster pack or in this case a smaller 12 volt rechargeable battery. I am also grounded to my vehicle chassis through my repowering rig. I have the CDR interface module connected to my Y adapter, and as you can see, I now have a green light on the interface module indicating power. This allows me to test the interface connection if needed. Once again, I have the software ready to go with case comments, and I am ready to collect data. I'm going to plug my repowering rig into my Y adapter, remember power last, and then click the Collect ACM Data icon. I answer the Ford Privacy question. The software will go through the standard three passes, and then I can save the collected data. Ultimately, using the repowering rig and an external source of power, I will have successfully collected data, bypassing the vehicle's electrical system, and without the necessity of the ignition key.